Hey there everybody, welcome back to the Big Board. I thought we'd take a quick look at Red Typhoon, wrap up on this, we finished the game and the uh, Germans uh, prevailed in this particular instance of the uh, game exploration primarily because the Soviets really didn't push hard enough to uh, capture more territory sooner we were a little tentative with the gameplay to start with for both sides in fact and uh, despite a massive late game push uh, on game turn 8 and 9 uh, Soviets actually took Rezhev they took uh, Gasthatsk, Gast, well, you know, this freaking place right here. And uh, they tried to take uh, Vyazma here as well. Uh, they did capture Vitebsk way over on the left-hand side of the map, which I can quickly show you over there, all the way over there, right here. Um, but uh, <clears throat> we couldn't push him out of there. But we compensated as the German player by uh, getting rid of most of the partisans and recapturing the cities in the center, counterattacking and taking back Rajev. Uh, and I think potentially uh, with this unit staying on for the entire game, that's minus five VPs, <coughs> which basically negates the picking up Vitebsk over here on the left-hand side. Is it Vitebsk? Yeah, it is. Uh, so really a pretty much a, a very strong win here for the German player. Now, the game does not have scales of victory. You either win or you lose as one player or the other. And as I look at it, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's difficult for the Soviet player here to be successful unless they're very aggressive and get a little bit lucky with some of the die rolls because rolling, uh, I think I talked about this in the live play we did, that hour-long live play, uh, that uh, attacking on the two to one table is a beat down you really only got uh, three chances in seven if you include the zero uh, most uh, most combats are going to have a zero opportunity in it uh, just because of the, the, the defensive bonuses <coughs> so only three chances of having a victory at two to one and uh, but then it spikes to one two three four five out of seven chances for a victory at three to one. So three to one is your juicy spot for odds. Hard to get those odds, uh, especially when you've got a stack of three regiments at 12, that means you're gonna get 36 factors aligned. Having 36 factors stacked up and around at, at two stacking points each, uh, sorry, two stacking point, two units per stack, makes it tough. So what I think of the game, this is a great introductory game. This is a fun introductory game, and I would set this up and play this again. I think you could really literally play this 10 minute or 15 minute turns. There's just not that many pieces on the board, and you can't move everything every turn, and you can't fight with everything every turn because of the action point system that it uses, which uh, I will uh, just spend a couple of minutes discussing right now. I know we did it in the live play, but you might not want to go through all that. Uh, to uh, understand the game. So the, the short version of the game is each turn both sides receive a certain number of action points that look like this and you put them on uh, formation uh, tracks which uh, uh, have alphanumerics on them, WR, 4th Army, etc. And you decide whether you're going to move or attack with the units and you keep a pool, the, the pool of the available chits here. You can also not use all the chits and keep them over there for later and use them at some other point in the future. Um, so basically the number of chits you get is not gonna allow you to move and attack with everything. There are some special rules for fourth panzer where they can basically attack with any formation that's activated. So um, that's nice. Uh, <coughs> beautiful components, good operational level game. Uh, it's a simple uh, odds-based CRT with uh, primarily retreats uh, as the combat result, and those so this becomes a bit of a shoving match really here. And the the combat uh, retreats are conducted by the attacker, so you're shoving units out of the way and then trying to press home the advantage on the specific attacks and the area that you're attacking. Uh, the combat 
factors and the movement factors are color coded depending on the type of movement rate uh, and uh, terrain that they're on that the units are on and that will impact how far they can advance and how far they can move in a given turn very straightforward uh, if you do res do retreat you have to as the defender you have to flip yourself over and become disorganized or disordered uh, which means in the following turn you won't be able to move and you will then be flipped back to your correct active side at the end of your turn. Which means as you're retreating, uh, you may well be left behind, which is not nice. So, uh, clocks in at eight pages of rules, including historical setup on the back. The full uh, setup chart on the back there. A uh, nice full color uh, user, little mini user guide that comes with it. It's got some designer, one page of designer notes. There's a user guide. Let me zoom out a little bit for that for you. Uh, pretty straightforward with the sequence of play there. It, it's bulk simple, but interesting enough that I think you get multiple plays out of this guy. I'm not, I don't think you get 10 plays out of it. Not maybe you could, but uh, I probably wouldn't play this 10 times. I'd, I'd say this is got another two or three plays with different folks to see how they, uh, how they would react to the system and, and engage with the system, uh, how they leverage the action points and where they focus on uh, their defense because the terrain is very, very interesting. You've got woods and cities and rivers and stuff all over the place. And uh, interesting enough, the time scale is not well defined. It's not uh, listed on the turn track and nor is the hex size uh, listed on the turn track, but we're dealing with a divisional scale here, so we can safely imagine they're five to 10 kilometer hexes and it's one or two, two days a turn, I would imagine. So I know I didn't really run you through the decision space, role, intelligence, player objectives, uh, typical format that we do here. This is a pretty straightforward game. It doesn't need a whole lot of deep explanation and analysis. I think it's a fun game. It's engaging, which I think is key. Uh, you uh, can't wait to see what's going to happen next turn, see what your opponent may do and how you can react to that. And uh, I think it has uh, great uh, counter art. The <coughs> numerals are large and very readable. There were some uh, comments during the live play on the counter color. You know, these Russians are they're almost a yellow, off-yellow color. Then there are some typical tan colored dudes. And then, of course, there's the one guard unit, the one shock army, first shock army. Uh, that's red. Uh, doesn't bother me too much. You've got uh, light gray for the, the Germans as well. And then a darker, a darker gray for the second panzer. And then uh, another shade of gray with a blue stripe for fourth panzer army. So, all in all good stuff I enjoyed it well worth the I'm thinking it's 30 bucks 35 bucks I want to say so uh, nice job Revolution Games Good. Re this is a reprint from a Command Magazine game finally remembered uh, it's called Red Typhoon hope you uh, have an opportunity to uh, enjoy yourself at some point in the near future look forward to talking to all of you again soon ciao